Father, here I am. My life is in your hands. Help me repair. You bid me to come. You bid me to come. Father, here I am. We bid me to come. Father, here I am. My life is in your hands. Help me repair. You bid me to come. You bid me to come, Father. Here I am. Here I am, Father. My life is in your hands. Help me repair. You bid me to come. You bid me to come. Father, here I am. You bid me to come. You bid me to come. Father, here I am. Ah, you bid me to come. Father, Father, here I am. Here I am, Father, my life is in your hands. Help me repair. You bid me to come. You bid me to come. Father, here I am. Father, here I am. My life is in your hands. Help me repair. You bid me to come. You bid me to come. Father, here I am. Father, here I am. Hannah came to you, became mother of children. 
Let me never go back to say with my challenges. Let me never go back to say with my challenges. I come home. I come to you. Jabez came to you, became more honorable. Hey, Hannah came to you, became mother of children. Let me never go back to same with my challenges. Father, let me never go back to same with my challenges. My father, I come to you with my challenges. I come to you with my Lepers came to you, they went back being cleansed. Batimos came to you, received bad insights. Let me never go back to say with my challenges. Father, let me never go back to say with my challenges. My father, I come to you with my challenges. I come to you with my challenges. Begin to present those challenges to God. Whatever is challenge this morning, present it to God. Let me never begin to present that those challenges to God. Say, Father, I never go back to say. Present those challenges to God, whatever they are. Begin to mention them. Say, Father, I come to you with this challenge this morning. Father, this is my challenge this morning. I come to you with it. I come to you with it. Father, this is my challenge. This is my challenge. Lord, I come to you this morning with my challenge. This is my challenge. Don't let me go back, Father. Don't let me go back, Father. This is my challenge, O God. Mention your challenge. Is the Lord God Almighty? Mention your challenge. Is able to do it? Yes, Lord. Let me never go back to say with my challenge. Oh, my Father, let me never go back to say with my challenge. Oh, my Father, let me never go back to say with my challenge. Oh, my Savior, let me never go back to say with my challenge. Oh, my Father, let me never go back to say with my challenge. Oh, my Savior, let me never go back to say with my challenge. Whatever is the challenge, make sure to go at this hour. The Lord of glory, the Lord that sent Batibos back in sight, the Lord that sent the leper, he will visit you this hour. You will not go back with your challenges. You will not go back with those pains. You will not go back with that problem. In the name of Jesus, make sure to go. Oh, my Father. Whatever the challenge, my Yes, Lord. Yes, Father. I never go back to say Let me never go back to say with my challenges. I pray for you now. As you have sung to the Lord, presenting those challenges to God. Psalm 34, verse 4 says, I saw the Lord and he had me. And delivered me from all my fears, all my fears, from those challenges that you have presented to the Lord. Let the Lord deliver you from them all in the name of Jesus. Let the Lord deliver you from that fear in the name of Jesus. Let the Lord deliver you from that affliction in the name of Jesus. Verse 5 says, They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. Where has the enemy been afflicting you with shame? What has the enemy been using to bring shame to your life? Today, the Lord takes away that affliction in the name of Jesus. That instrument of shame, that seed of disgrace, the Lord takes it away from your life in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, verse 6 said, The poor man cried, and the Lord had him, 
and saved him out of all his troubles. As you have sung to the Lord and you have cried to the Lord in that song, from whatever trouble this morning, the Lord delivers you in the name of Jesus. The Lord delivers you. 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 The Lord delivers you in the name of Jesus. What is that yoke of affliction? Bible says, by the reason of anointing, the yokes are broken. Bible says, where the word of the king is there, there is power. Bible says, where the spirit of the Lord is there, there is liberty. On the basis of these three scriptures, we command any yoke of affliction in your life right now be broken in the name of Jesus. 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 Let that yoke be broken in the name of Jesus. Let the Lord's stretch, hands be stretched towards you now. We lay hold on that bank that Jesus has deposited, has made deposit for us from the healing deposit of God. The deposit that Christ made through the stripes that he took. God, he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. We draw from that deposit of healing based on his stripes and we apply upon your life now and we say from that sickness from that infirmity be made whole let the lord heal you let the lord make you whole let the lord heal you let the lord make you whole as you lay your hands on where you are pained whether physical or internal right now let the hand of jehovah be straight towards you and we say be healed be healed be healed be healed in the name of God, be healed. In the name of God, be healed. Be healed. And today, you will look for it. You will not find it again. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever form of leprosy, spiritual leprosy, that you have been afflicted with. Luke chapter 17, 12 to 14. They came to him, the ten lepers. And they cried and they said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And he said, go show yourself to the priest. Just a word. And as they were going, they were cleansed. Today, by the word of God, whatever leprosy of sickness, whatever leprosy of financial indebtedness, whatever leprosy of pain, in whatever form, let we, we come out right now by the word of God that says, by his strength you were made whole. By the words of God that says they look up unto him and they were lightened. And their faith were not ashamed. We command, be made cleansed. Be cleansed, be cleansed, be cleansed from that leper to be cleansed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, O Lord, our Father. We give you praise and glory. Holy Spirit is another liberation hour. Come and do what you know best to do. Come and save, come and heal, come and deliver, come and open the eyes of our understanding even through the instrument of your word. Thank you, Jehovah God. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Please be seated. God bless you. The theme of our liberation hour this morning is victory over protesting powers. Part one. Victory over what? Protesting powers. We're looking at part one today. Praise God. Victory over protesting powers. Pass. What does it mean to protest, beloved? From dictionary, it means to express opposition through action or words. To express what? Opposition. I mean, that is, is to protest is not, uh, it's not what we are unfamiliar with, given what has been happening recently. To express opposition through action or what? Or words. It says also it's a formal and solemn declaration of what? Of objection. A former or solemn declaration of what? Objection. You know, in the law court, the, the lawyer will say, Objection, my Lord. Praise God. When one of the uh, legal counsel is cross examining, the other person can say, Objection, what? My Lord. I, I protest against that question that he's asking my uh, client. Praise God. So the counsel will object. So he says, 
to the protest is a formal and, and solemn declaration of what? Of objection. It also says it's, it means to resist or to object. Praise God. So what then, or who are protesting powers? Since we are looking at victory over what? Protesting powers. Who are protesting powers? They are bodies that resist positive impacts or blessings in the lives of their victims. They are forces that resist positive impact, resist progress, resist blessings in the lives of their victims. And these victims could be individuals, it could be families, it could be communities, it could be nations, it could be institutions or organizations. These forces resist positive impact, resist progress, resist blessings in the lives of who? They are victims. Those are protesting powers. They are also powers that resist good things happening. They resist good things happening in lives of their victims. They resist good things, resist breakthroughs, resist blessings, you know, uh, happening in the lives of their uh, victims. And these bodies could be personalities. These protesting powers, we say they are bodies. So they could be what? Personalities. They could also be principalities. They could be powers. They could be rulers of darkness of this world. They could be spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. They could be satanic uh, organizations or societies. Praise God. Let's go to the word of God uh, to uh, draw more lessons. Zechariah chapter 3 uh, from verse 1. Zechariah 3 from verse 1. Victory over protesting powers. Zechariah 3 1 says, And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before who? The angel of the Lord. And Satan standing at his right hand to do what? To resist him. Satan standing at the right hand of Joshua, the high priest, to resist him. Amen. To enjoy it, when you look at other translations, you see the different expression that was used for resisting him. For example, the International Standard Version says, uh, Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. To oppose him. Just like we saw from the dictionary definition. Uh, Darby Version says, Satan stood at his right hand to be his adversary. At least to be his enemy. That no, this thing would not be possible. That's how Darby Version puts it. Contemporary English Version says, uh, that Satan, that he says Satan standing at Joshua's right, right side, ready to accuse him. Remember, it's called what? The accuser of blessing. So these are different uh, words used to express protest, to stand as adversary, to accuse uh, before one, to oppose. Then the Bible in basic English says, it says Satan at his right hand, ready to take up a cause against him. To take up a cause, to say, no way, I will bring issues against you. Why? God must not proceed with you. Praise God. So in our text, we saw that Satan stood at the right hand of Joshua the high priest to uh, clap for him. No. He stood to protest. He stood as a protesting power against Joshua the high priest. He stood to resist Joshua the high priest being decorated by God. Amen. Spiritually. He was to be decorated by the angel of God. And, Josh, and Satan stood by his right hand to say, no way, you aren't going to be decorated. And this was going on in the realm of the spirit. You know? See, so how do I know that um, it was to be decorated? When you read verse 5 of Zechariah 3, you see what eventually happened? That was what God wanted to do. And Satan stood to protest. Zechariah 3 verse 5, it says, And I said, let them set a fair meter. A meter is that type of decorative hat that priests used to wear, that bishops wear, you know, um, hairdress. A fair meter upon his head. So they set a fair meter upon his head and clothed him with what? With garments. Praise God. So this was what was going to be done. Joshua the high priest was going to be decorated spiritually. And when one is decorated spiritually, it will now manifest physically into something tangible, something you can see. But in the realm of the spirit, 
Satan was saying no. He was protesting Joshua the high priest being decorated, being honored by God spiritually. Amen. Remember, it went on in the realm of the spirit. It wasn't what was happening physically. Perhaps Joshua the high priest didn't even know anything was what was happening. Just like very many of us. Things are going on in the realm of the spirit. Except God shows us in dreams. You know, we don't even know. We don't even know. And day by day, God is fighting battles on our behalf, giving us victory, but because we don't know. That's why God will say, thank me, thank me, thank me. You know, at times we begin to thank you because we don't see. So we don't thank him enough. Even when we thank you, we don't thank him enough because we are not able to see what is happening in the realm of the spirit. Amen. So, beloved, similarly, just as Satan withstood the high priest of God, protesting against his being decorated by God through his angels. The same way a lot of people today are being protested against by Satan and his agents and diverse bodies that uh, work with Satan. They are protesting every day in the realm of the spirit against the decoration of a son of God, of a daughter of Zion, of a priest of God, of a man of God, of a woman of God. They are protesting every day, saying, no, no, it will happen. Praise the name of the Lord. And that's why many people are wondering. God has assured me, he has settled me maritally. God has told me, he has shown me that my children are coming. In fact, he already gave me their names. Why are they not manifesting? Why are the things that God has promised are not manifesting? It could be, beloved, that Satan is what is resisting. It could be that his agents are resisting. It could be that some societies that belong to him, they have come together to resist, to protest, to say no. This, this ain't going to happen. It's going to manifest. This that you want to do because God was the one who wanted to honor Joshua the high priest to decorate him and he has instructed an angel to do it. And Joshua, I mean Satan was there and he resisted. He stood as an adversary. He accused, he opposed, he resisted that happening to Joshua the high priest. So, beloved, very many people today are similarly being protested against, being opposed, being resisted by the enemy, by powers. You know, it could be Satan himself, it could be principalities, one principality in one's uh, environment, in one's family line, in one's place of work, somewhere is resisting. Is protesting that this, this aren't going to what happen, you know. It's resisting one being delivered from bondage. It's resisting one's uh, being healed, you know, or one good thing or the other. Very many people should have prospered beyond imagination. They have seen it and they have been working towards it, but Satan is protesting that no, this prosperity aren't going to get into this person's hands. Praise God. And you say, so pastor, why the protest? Why will Satan protest against one? You know, why do they protest those bodies, those powers? Why do they uh, protest? You see, protesting powers don't just come out and begin to protest. Just like we know, in normal situations, people don't just jump to the roads and begin to protest. They protest because they have reasons to do so. So they don't just come and begin to oppose their victims. You know, uh, they do so because they have valid reasons to accuse. They are victims before God. To accuse their victims before he that has the power to bless, that has the power to release the blessing. So they don't just come and begin to resist. They don't just come and protest. Like what we, are, we witnessed in our nation, they came out with some reasons and they said we are protesting because of this. And those reasons were valid. Praise God. So protesting powers, they do so because they have valid reasons to accuse their victims before God. They do so because they have valid reasons that give them what? Legal ground. They do so because they have valid reasons that give them what? Legal ground to oppose them before God. And you need to know that the Lord our God is what? He's a righteous judge. The Lord our God is who? A righteous judge. They know he's a righteous judge. Satan knows that God is a righteous judge. That God will not do evil. That God will adjudicate correctly. He will judge in the right way. He will not judge wrongly. Praise the name of the Lord. So he won't judge wrongly. So Satan knows that. And 
because they have valid reasons, they come to oppose. Let's confirm this in the word of God in Zechariah chapter 3, uh, verse number 3. Zechariah 3 and number 3. Let's look at why Satan protested against Joshua the high priest. Zechariah 3, 3 says what? Now, Joshua was clothed with what? With filthy garments. In plural. Joshua clothed with the gar- with filthy garment and stood before the angel that was to be blessed. How can somebody be standing with filthy garments and be coming to get blessing? Amen. You, when you are in filthy garment, you are not qualified to even stand before God. And, jo- and Satan knows all these truths and principles. So he stood, Gidigbadia, to say, Well, no way. He stood as a, as a rock of great battle to say, No way. Mr. Priest uh, Joshua aren't going to be blessed. Aren't going to be honored. Look at his clothes. Look at him. Praise God. So he protested because Joshua was clothed with what? Filthy garments. Filthy rag. Which is an indication of what? Of sin. Of iniquity. Which means somehow Joshua the high priest had something to do with sin, with iniquity. Either he himself has committed it or it could be traced to him. You know, this can be confirmed in Isaiah 64, verse 6. You can write it down. We're not reading. Isaiah 64, verse 6, it lets you know that uh, unrighteousness or sin will lead to filthy rag. It says, our unrighteousness is like what? A filthy rag before God. Praise God. When there is sin, when there is iniquity in one's life and it has not been repented of, one has not been forgiven, sin and iniquity will introduce what? Spiritually, filthy rag. Feel the rag. It's a sign that one is, uh, is in sin or iniquity. It could be that one committed that sin or iniquity and one has not repented of it. Or it could be that the consequences of those sins and iniquity, they are upon one's life. Maybe you did not commit it uh, uh, directly. You know, for example, uh, if you live, if, if an environment is littered with feces, right? And one goes to stay there. You are not the one that littered the environment with feces. You now go and stand there. What will be coming upon you? Flies. You cannot stop the flies. The flies will be coming upon you. The odor of the feces will be all around you. Praise God. That is how the issue of sin is. It could be that Joshua the high priest, and it could be, but when you read down later that scripture, you will know it came upon him from the land. From the land. Praise the name of the Lord. But we're not going to that details today. So we saw that um, it was because of sin, because of iniquity, that uh, Satan came to protest. To protest. So, uh, what are the likely basis that Satan and his agent can use to protest against us? Just as we have seen in the case of. Um, uh, Joshua the high priest. Number one, there is what issue of sin or what iniquity. So we established that it was because there was a legal ground, there was a valid reason. He was clothed in filthy garment. Was why Satan could protest against his being blessed. But there are very many reasons why filthy rag could come upon one, or why uh, Satan could protest against some people's um, blessings. Number one is involvement with sin and iniquities. Then two is covenants and entanglement. Three is causes and negative pronouncement. Four is basis of what? Authority. And we have very many like that. Sins and iniquity. When there are sins and iniquity, when there are covenants that, will, that facilitate such, when there are causes or negative pronouncement, when uh, the powers that are doing so have authority over the person's life, it could be the basis for what? For the protest, because uh, we'll look at them one after the other. But in this part one, we'll just be dealing with victory over what protesting powers based on sins and what iniquities. And I plead with you, uh, ensure that you follow through all the series of this. Maybe then you have been protesting against your progress in any area, protesting against your decoration, your honor in diverse areas of life in the area of marriage, in the area of business, in having children, in progress in life financially, uh, you ensure you follow through so that you have victory and you possess victory in the mighty name of Jesus. So in this part one, we're just looking at 
having victory over protesting powers based on the issue of sins and what? Iniquities. Sins and um, iniquities. Quickly, let's look at um, Psalm 32, verses 1 to 2. Psalm 32, verses 1 to 2. Psalm 32 from verse 1 says, uh, Blessed is Blessed is he whose what? Transgression is um, forgiven. Whose sin is what? Is covered. Amen. Whose transgression is forgiven. Whose sin is covered. That is, you don't have issue of sin. Trace to you. You don't have filthy garment. True sin. True iniquity. You are a blessed person. Because Satan will have no basis to do what? To protest against you. You are a blessed man. Says the psalmist. He says, you... Uh, your transition is forgiven, your sin is what? Covered. Because in, at that time, uh, until Christ came, that was when sin could be blotted out. In the Old Testament, their sin could also could only be what? Covered. The blood of animals that were, they were offering for sin offering could not take away sin. So it could only cover it. Praise God. The way you now look at verse 2, it says, Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord does what? Imputed not iniquity. That is, God does not trace iniquity to you. This time around, you are not the one that committed it. But maybe your father or your son. And you are the son of or granddaughter of or daughter of, you know. Aha. So, it says, if you also don't have it traced to you by consequences, you are also what? A blessed man. It says, blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputed not iniquity. In whose spirit there is what? No God. So, beloved, sins are iniquities. The constitute legal ground upon which protesting powers could contend against manifestation of blessings in our lives. What are these things? Are iniquities. You know them. Disobedience against the laws of God. Disobedience against the counsel of God. Disobedience against the commandments of God. We know them all. Lying, stealing, fornication, you know, and all that. Even as simple as ignoring the counsel of God. It's a sin. God says, son, Go that way. You refuse to go. He says, son, go and do this. You did part of it. Just like King Saul, who uh, was instructed, go and destroy all the Amalekites. And he destroyed the majority of them and left their king and left the fat cattle. He disobeyed. He disobeyed God. Where are we in incomplete obedience? Incomplete obedience is no obedience. As far as God is what? Concerned. Some of us will say, hey, God will understand. They will do half. They will leave half undone. No. God does not understand that. God is not man. Amen. 99% is not past man with God. 100% in obedience. Is that how you do it or not? Praise the name of the Lord. In fact, with God, it is worse. When you do it halfway, according to Revelation, it says, I wish that you were either cold or hot. Because you are lukewarm, I will spoil you out. Praise God. Which means cold or hot will have been better. Praise the name of the Lord. So, sins are iniquities, such as involvement with idol worship. God haven't instructed, don't bow to anything. You begin to bow down to images and reverence them in the way of God. Whatever uh, uh, reasons that you could adduce to it is expressly written in the word of God, you know, that you shouldn't. Exodus 25 to 6, you see it there, that we should not bow down to images, to idols, and reverence them. Praise God. You know, an involvement with diverse uh, works of wickedness. You know, uh, cheating, lying, oppression, fornication, adultery, and all sorts. Sins are iniquities. They will give the enemy legal ground. Or bloodshed. You go and abort or you go and uh, kill an innocent, innocent life for whatever reason. God has said, no, you did not give life. Therefore, never ever what? Take life. Praise God. So, the protesting powers, they will protect, they will protest on two grounds. When it comes to sins and what? Iniquities. Number one is the ground of the fact that since you have committed sin and iniquity and you have not repented of it and you have not been forgiven of it and it's still down in your record that you did this, then you are not qualified for blessing before God. Because the Bible says, in Isaiah 59, 1 to 3, it says that, uh, uh, that it's not as if our his ears are dull when we cry or his hands are short to save. He said, but our sins are iniquity. They have made what? 
a separation. They have made to hide his face. So since our iniquities create separation, they made God angry. Amen. No sinner shall receive. The blind man uh, in John chapter 9, when they were arguing with him, whether Jesus Christ was, uh, uh, was the one that was from God or not, he said, but we know that God does not hear what? Sinners. Praise God. So, uh, Satan will accuse a sinner before God that God, this person is a sinner. He ought not to hear his prayer or her prayer. You know, therefore, don't bless this person. That is number one. The issue of the sin and what? Iniquity. Then number two, basis has to do with the consequences of those sins and iniquities. Some iniquities have consequences of judgment. By what has been done beyond the issue of being cleansed, there are judgments that have been pronounced both by man and God. Judgments hanging on the person. Judgments hanging, you know, from the word of God. So, Satan knows the word and knows all this. So, based on those judgments, he also protests and say, uh, Dear God, Heavenly Father, you are a righteous judge. There has been judgment pronounced that this person must not prosper. Because of this, this, this. It's, he will bring it. He's called the accuser of the brethren. He will bring the record. There have been judgment that this person should not be married based on this, this, this. Look at this. And once he's able to validly prove that, God will pull back because he's a righteous judge. So based on the actual sins and iniquities and based on the consequence of the sins and iniquities, the judgment pronounced Satan or his agents, the protesting powers, they can resist people's word, uh, blessing. I recall uh, some years back, I was so concerned about the daughter of Zion in quotes, I say in quotes now, because when God gave the revelation, then you now query. So bothered about this person's uh, issue of breakthrough in marriage. I haven't missed out to this person. You know, and I spoke and I was crying to God for a while. God did not answer me anything. He didn't say yes, he didn't say no. It was just quiet. One day I was preparing for uh, the vigil with now science. I was on my knees. And the Lord said, See, see, look at the person. I brought a vision of the person. Look at the person that you are crying for. The person was coming from fornication to the vigil. Praise God. And I confronted the person. And she confessed. From fornication to where? To vigil. Yes. And servant of God was on his knees crying. Oh Lord, bring husband. Bring husband. You know, see how they, they, they torment servants of God? Praise God. Just make us to be fasting and praying for nothing. Praise the name of the Lord. That's why this day we make you to do the fasting and prayer yourself. Amen. So that when you know what you have gone through, you won't want to compromise. If you just use the basis of that to do everything, people don't appreciate it. Amen. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. You know, I recall another case. This person was, um, um, this case was after marriage, the husband began to misbehave. And they were married in the church. And the, the more we prayed, the more, the worse the situation was becoming. Ah, it's as if even our prayers was fanning the, the case. So I paused and began to pray and quiet prayer. Lord, why is it that the more we are praying, this husband refused to budge? Then the Lord gave three reasons. Number one, has to do with the foundation that was yet to be dealt with. Number two, has to do with the person. I said, ask her. When she was a single, she enjoyed men's husband. Why should men not why should other women not enjoy her own husband? You know? So I called her. Because that was not part of her confession. When she was doing liberation, she didn't open up. So they were not dealt with. That's why he that must come to equity must come with clean hands. When you are coming to be helped by God, and they say, what are the things you'll be involved with? So that you can be helped in prayer to deal with them. Don't be shy. Don't be ashamed to call a spade a spade. Don't hold back information so that God will, will be led in prayer. God will forgive you. And once you are forgiven, it's blotted out. Satan cannot accuse you with that again. Praise God. But when you hold back, ah, which ear will hear this one? You know, they will be looking at you with one eye. You are undoing yourself. There is nothing new underwear. Under heaven. Everybody has his own past. Praise the name of the Lord. So, and the Lord gave the information about this sister, and I called her, and she confirmed. And then we were now able to lead her into proper prayer. So the devil was protesting, saying, no way. The husband must not be free, must not be released. 
other women must enjoy her own husband. And she was crying. Crying. You know? So, but when immediately she uh, confessed and she was led in repentance prayers and the issue dealt with through the mystery of reconciliation, the husband stopped. The husband did what? Stopped. Without talking to the husband. My wife is a witness. We didn't talk to the, we didn't reach the husband. By himself, he stopped. By himself, he stopped. And things turn around for them. So, if there are no legal grounds, the protesting powers are not able to protest. They are not able to resist. Praise the name of the Lord. I can give you very many examples from the cases we have dealt with. And like I said, it could also be from one's foundation. It may be that you were not the one that committed the sins and iniquities. I've shown us from the Bible that iniquity could be imputed. Maybe because of your father, what your father did. Because like I told you, that other sister, uh, one was done by her, the other was by her father. And God said, the father did this. And we got the father also to confirm. And then we dealt with them. You know, because you are a son of a person, or a daughter of a person, and this person has done this. I want to share with you how um, 17 children of a man's father could hardly get married. Only one got married because of the iniquity of their father. The sister is alive today. She's doing well in marriage. She has two children. But until then, she was 38 or about that. No man was saying hello. The same thing with other children from the father. And, you know, man was polygamous. So what God said, the father destroyed the lives of many people's children through immorality. And the sister went and brought her father, which I did not ask her to bring. Praise God. But, you know, and at this time, father had been born again. Can you see? Father was already what? Born again. And when I put it to the father, the father said no, that whatever was wrong with her daughter was persecution. Praise God. So, but by the mercy of God, through scripture, his understanding was open. He agreed. And when he was led to bring thorough repentance on that transaction, and God forgave, it was lifted. I don't know about the other children, but that sister that came to us, it was now lifted from her life. And she got married. Praise God. So, the issue of sin and iniquity could come from one's father or mother or grandparents. We have very many examples. I told you once how a, a daughter was crying one afternoon. A member of the choir in those days came in the afternoon and I just saw her crying. I said, what is it? I said, she was tired. No marriage. All the marriages she's been attending are those of our kids. I said, go, see, go and tell God. What? Why? I'm serving you. I've done everything. And God showed in the dream in, uh, in the afternoon when she, she, she prayed and wept and from there I slept. And she saw how her mother was scattering the courtship of a couple to be. Telling the husband lies against the lady. And the thing broke up. And she woke up from there. She said, you see, if your mother did not allow other person to marry, only God knew what the lady had said. You know? So God has showed you that is the only thing outstanding. And it was dealt with. She's married today. At least with a kid. Last time I heard from her. So it could come from uh, one's parents. So protesting powers will protest as long as there are issues of what? Sins and iniquities. Either from you yet to be addressed or from your parents or your from, 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 from your ancestors. It's this latter part that most people don't know. They say, well, I thank God. I am living right. All my sins and iniquities have been I've confessed them before. I've been forgiven. What about you from your background? That's why when we begin to pray now, we ask God to reveal to us. Praise God. What is the strength of this, of the protesting powers? These powers that protest, how strong can their protest be? How far can it go? How strong can it be? How far can it go? Beloved, their protest could be as strong as holding back anyone. No matter the title, no matter the anointing, Right? I hope we recall that from our test, the person that was being resisted was who? High priest. He was not an ordinary priest. He was a high priest. He was a high priest. Right? Once they have a legal ground, they will continue to resist and protest against that person irrespective of title or position or anointing or, any, or service. Amen. Or, or seed. 
Praise God. What those ones will do for you is that it will pave way for God to have mercy on you and to be showing you that look, there is something here. There is something here because God will not violate his principles. When you sow seed, it will make God to give you revelations or push you to a place where you, a place like this, where you have teachings are, are like this that will open your understanding so that you pray right. So that you stop blaming God and think and j- jumping from one place to that, th- thinking that, oh, there's no anointing here, there's no anointing there. It is irrespective of anointing anywhere. Praise the name of the Lord. So as long as there is sin or iniquity, the protesting power will accuse their victim successfully. They will resist the blessing. And how far they can continue till eternity until the issue of sin and iniquity is what? Is dealt with. That's why at times it takes a, a long time before testimonies come. Not that God wants to suffer you. Not that God is not there. Not that his power is not there, but the issue that the enemy is using to protect is still there. Hasn't been dealt with. So that's how far. That's why we need knowledge. We need understanding. And not just pray and pray and pray. So the protesting powers will continue to go on as long as the legal ground is there. The valid reasons that they are what? They are there. Amen. And like I said, uh, if Joshua the high priest was resisted, anyone could be what? We resisted. So how do you overcome protesting powers? As we round up, let's see how that was done. Zechariah chapter 3, verse number 4. How do you overcome protesting powers? Zechariah 3, verse 4. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away what? The filthy garment. This was God that now had to intervene. God intervened uh, because it was God. And look at what God did in order for a passage to be made for Joshua the high priest to be honored, to be decorated. What did God do? He said, he said to those who are around, take away what? The filthy garments. Why did he say that you take it away? He said, he said take away the filthy garment from him and unto him he said, behold, I have what? Cause thy iniquity to pass from thee. To pass from thee. He has taken care of what? The iniquity. He has forgiven. Amen. He has forgiven. And then he said, once since I knew I've taken away, feel the government can no longer be there. And then he now said, and I will clothe thee with what? A change of uh, raiment. We change your raiment. You won't have feel the garment again. Beloved, it is by getting rid of the basis of the protest that you deal with it. Getting rid of the basis of what? The protest. Ensuring there is no sin, no iniquity that Satan can use to accuse you, either directly from you or from your foundation. It's as you take care of it that you are able to prevail over protesting powers. You know, until this is done, they will continue to protest validly. Validly. You know, that's how it is in physical protest. Until the demands are met, they continue to do what? To protest. The Labour uh, NLC, the New Labour uh, Congress, and all of them, when they are protesting, government, government will pacify them and say, okay, 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 okay we have had, we, we will deal. Maybe they do some. They say, okay, we'll promise to do the others later. So they move out. If they fail to do the ones they promised later, what do they do? They come back again and begin to protest. So the powers continue to protest as long as those things are there, you know, and until you deal with the sin and iniquity under this uh, part one, they will continue to pray. And this is why at times prayers linger. People go through prayers, diverse prayers, deliverances, spiritual exercises are done, and it seems as if there is no result. Because the reason for the legal ground, the valid basis upon which they are protesting has not been what dealt with. Praise the name of the Lord. So today, if by his mercy you take away, you deal with that sin and iniquity, the Lord will remove, I mean, and take away the legal, the, the filthy garment, the protective powers, at times they know, they just live by themselves. And if they don't live, the Lord will now rebuke them, like he did to, uh, or the priest of God can now rebuke them and they will go. This time around, remember, it was before God and before the angel of God that he resisted. So, beloved, you are wondering why is marriage still holding that long? Why is fruitness hold that long? Why is financial breakthrough? Why is this problem, this challenge, you know, 
getting prolonged, it could be that there are issues of sins and iniquities. At times, we don't know. Some of the things we had done before when we were younger, when we were yet uh, without Christ, we had not uh, specifically uh, confessed them and gotten forgiveness from God. Some of them, the judgment are still lingering and they have not been taken care of. And Satan, who knows, he will just bring record before God. But today, as you rise in the place of prayer and you deal with those things and Satan has nothing to accuse you before God. Just like just right, he said, the prince of this world come to me and what? He found nothing. Nothing to accuse me. So he can't resist me. He can't resist me. He can't protest against me. So it must be that you are sacked out, you know, and you are not found what? Wanting. And as we do this today in the place of prayer, God will give us victory over protesting powers in the mighty name of Jesus. The good news is that Christ has already uh, paid the price. Isaiah 53, 5 and 6 confirms that he, Christ, was wounded for our transgression. He was blue for iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are what? We are healed. Verse 6 says, All we like, a sh- like sheep have gone what? Astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord had laid on him, on Jesus, the iniquity of us all. So, but this has been provided. It is not automatic. You have to draw on it and apply it to your life to receive forgiveness for whatever sin or iniquity. Praise God. And finally, Romans 4.25 says what? Jesus who was what? Delivered for our offenses and was raised again for what? Our justification. We need to lay hold on this and go before the Lord and repent of those iniquities and call upon him to forgive us and blot out the records based on these scriptures and God will do so. And protesting power will have no reason again to resist our blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's rise to our feet as we begin to pray. I come to you with my challenges. I come to you with my challenges. Let me never go back the same with my challenges. Let me never go back the same with my challenges. Sing it two times. I I come come to to you with my challenges. I come, oh, I come to you. With, with my challenges, challenges. Let, let me never go back the same with my challenges. I say, oh, let, let me never go back the same with my challenges. Sing it one more time. I, I come, come to you with my challenges. I come, oh, I come to you with my challenges. Let me never go back the same with my challenges. My father, let me never go, go back, back the same with my challenges. Amen. Say, my father, my father, my father. Concerning the operation of protesting powers in any area of my life, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. In the name of Jesus, let's open up and cry to God. This is the moment of liberation. You must not miss out now. Have mercy on me, Lord consign the operations of powers protesting against my decoration against my progress against my advancement in any area of life have mercy on me Lord 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 Lord. in the name of Jesus Lord have mercy on me 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 I cry for mercy I cry for mercy. I cry for mercy. I cry for mercy. I cry for mercy. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, oh Lord my Father, once again, shine your light into my life. Shine your light into my past. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and talk to God. Shine your light. Because if you don't know, if you cannot see what is giving them legal ground, what is giving them valid reasons to protest, you may pray and pray and nothing will happen. Shine your light into my life. Shine your light into my life. In the name of Jesus, 
Lord, shine your light. Lord, shine your light. Lord, shine your light. Lord, shine your light into my life in the name of Jesus. Shine your light, Lord. Shine your light, Lord. Shine your light, Lord. Bring my life into your light. Let no aspect of my life be hidden in darkness. Let no aspect of my life. Before I was conceived in my mother's womb, while I was in my mother's womb, at birth, while I was growing up, diverse aspects of my life, Lord, bring them into your light. Let nothing about my life be hidden from you, O God. Let nothing about my life be hidden. Bring my life into your light. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This one, you must pray very well. This prayer of revelation. I told you of very many cases. And I held back very many testimonies for time. Praise God. That until we knew the specific issue of sin, I knew it. That was when we could handle the cases correctly. And at times, Satan will sit upon it. That nobody will know. Because he knows. Just like in Isaiah, it says, make their eyes blind. Make them deaf. Let them have no understanding. So that they will not pray and repent. And I heal them. He will cover the real issue. Other issues that are not essential, he will allow them to be seen. That's why you must cry to God. Say, oh Lord, my Father, by your mercy, reveal to me the issues that are giving protesting powers legal ground over my life, over my marriage, over my finance, over any aspect of my life. Reveal the issues giving protesting powers legal ground giving them power to resist me, to resist the prayers of servants of God over my life. Reveal to me, oh God, reveal by your mercy. Reveal to me by your mercy. What did I do? What was it that was done concerning my life? That is, what issue of sin or iniquity? Lord, reveal. Reveal by your mercy. Reveal to me the issue of sin or iniquity. The issue of sin or iniquity. Make sure you, are, you address that. We are coming to other issues. We are coming to covenants. We are coming to causes. We are coming to other issues. We take them gradually. You must be free. Karuba Shenteya. Lord, reveal by your mercy. The issue of sin or iniquity. Is it committed by me? Is it, was it committed by me? Was it committed by parties in my foundation? Lord, reveal to me. Lord, I want to know why Satan is able to resist resist my being decorated resist my progress resist my marriage resist my fruitfulness resist my career progress resist my financial progress resist my healing resist my deliverance resist my promotion resist me dear brother lord i call upon you lord i call upon you be merciful to reveal be merciful to reveal bring it out oh god 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 Bring it out, oh God. Bring it out. Bring it out. Lord, bring it out. Bring it out, oh God. Bring it out, oh God. Protesting powers can only protest as long as they have valid reasons. Lord, reveal to me the valid reasons giving protesting powers right to protest against my, my breakthrough right to oppose me in any area of life father reveal to me reveal to me what have been given protesting powers right to protest right to accuse me right to, to, to resist my being blessed my breakthrough father reveal father reveal father reveal father reveal father reveal in the name of Jesus In Jesus' name we pray. We're going to take it one more time because that is very crucial. Once that is known, I tell you the truth, you, can, you are as good as smiling home because what is to be done is the word of God. You may even know what is to be done yourself and you will deal with it and your testimonies hey, will begin to manifest. Amen. Say by your mercy, O God, show me what sin or iniquity that protesting powers have been using to accuse me before you. Lord, reveal to me. Reveal to me, O oh God, the issues of sins and iniquities, either committed by myself or from my foundation, by my parents, by my ancestors, by my in-laws, 
from my lands from whatever quarter lord reveal to me lord reveal to me lord reveal to me lord reveal to me 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 oh lord reveal to me reveal to me oh lord reveal to me Lord, reveal to me. In Jesus' name we pray. We want to go before God and bring forth repentance before the Lord. Concerning the ones you already know that the Holy Spirit has dropped in your, in your, in your mind, mention them specifically to God. If none has been dropped, just pray generally. The Lord will hear. If He wants it to be addressed specifically, He will reveal to you. And we must really cry to God. We must really cry to God. Amen. I've, I, I, I recall the case of a family. All the children were not, their lives were out of balance. Graduates, they were just, they, they were neither here or there. By the time we began to inquire, it was the grandfather, not even the father. But there was now judgment upon them. The father had his fair share, and this time it was the grandchildren. The father was known to use his position in government then to oppress very many people and take over people's uh, 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 merchandise and seize them illegally. Take some home, sell some to make money. Use the position. Look at the one ton destruction that took place in Lagos and Nigeria recently. Look at those people that went to destroy buses massively. Hey, <laughs> I am I pity their generation. When you see their grandchildren not unable to buy even bicycle you'll be wondering they will walk 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 when they want to when it comes to your vehicle it will be impossible because they deprive a lot of people of mobility people will be going about now they can't they can't enter BRT and all that they don't understand very many people who loot their shops who did it they will pay heavily it's because they don't have knowledge you know if you know anyone of them better ask them to go and return and begin to cry to god for mercy and forgiveness because they will pay for it generations of born will pay Amen. These children were grandchildren. They were all of them. They paid for the weekend of their grandfather. They paid for it heavily. Just like the grandchildren of Saul paid for it dearly with their lives for the blood that of, of the Gibeonites that Saul shed. Let's go before the Lord. Say, Father, I come to you. So we don't have so much time. I'm going to go and lump the, the repentance together, both for personal or for foundational. Say, Father, I come to you. To ask for forgiveness of the issues of sins and iniquities, either committed by myself or committed by from my foundation, by my parents, by my guardians, by the elders of my lands, by my ancestors, by whoever had authority over my life. Oh Lord, forgive me. I repent of those sins and iniquities. Allowing protesting powers to oppose me. Forgive me, O oh Lord, forgive me. Forgive me, O oh Lord, for cry to God for forgiveness now. Cry to God for forgiveness. If you know any that your parents, your ancestors have done, cry to God to forgive you. Those issues of sins and iniquities that will be making protesting powers to say, No, he is the son of this person. She is the daughter of this person. No marriage. No marriage. Look at what the mother did. Look at what the father did. Look at what the grandfather did. Look at what the grandmother did. Cry to God to forgive you. Don't say, uh, that mother, I learned my grandmother was a witch. Uh, the witchcraft, what she did with the witchcraft, the consequence can be upon you also. Cry to God for forgiveness. Don't say that grandfather was terrible. You will call, you call him a stupid man. Uh, all his actions, because you are a grandson, the judgment may be upon you also. Why don't you cry to God? that Lord forgive me for the issues of sins and iniquities that are recorded against me that the judgments are crying against me from what I have done in time past from what my parents did from what my ancestors did from what was done from my lands from what was done by my guardians for what was done by my in-laws Father have mercy and forgive me forgive me O Lord forgive me forgive me O Lord forgive me I have no right to argue 
because they have legal grounds they have basis to oppose me i have no reason to cry lord forgive me i cry to you for forgiveness cry to god these were the prayers we led those people that i shared that testimony with you they were led through and god forgave them and god broke the yoke and protesting past packed their luggage and left and their breakthroughs manifested lord forgive me forgive me oh lord forgive me i repent in those ashes for all my unrighteousness all my ungodliness my fornication in time past my adultery in time past my cheating in time past my deception in time past my oppression in time past my idolatry in time past my blood shed in time past father forgive me forgive me lord forgive me forgive my lies forgive all the evils i've done in time past that the enemy is using to oppose me forgive oh lord forgive forgive oh lord forgive forgive all my wickedness forgive all my wickedness oh god forgive all my wickedness oh god forgive all my wickedness oh god in jesus name we have prayed the lord will forgive you in the name of jesus the lord will forgive in the name of jesus the lord will forgive in the name of jesus rise to your feet colossians 2 14 says blotting out all handwritings that are against us of ordinance ordinance that are against us christ has taken them out of the way he has nailed them to the cross we're going to ask the same father lord with the precious blood of jesus with the precious blood of jesus blot out all records of sins and iniquities that protesting powers have been using to accuse me oh lord blot them out blot them out oh god blot them out oh god blot them out oh god all the records of sins and iniquities since you are forgiving me oh lord blot out the records blot out the records blot out the records in the name of jesus lord blot them out lord blot them out lord blot them out in the mighty name of jesus blot out the records blot out blot out blot out the records in the name of jesus lord blot out the records in jesus name we pray say father lord as you did to joshua the high priest remove any filthy garments that could be covering me as a result of sin or iniquity lord remove them from my life remove from me any filthy garment remove from me any garment of reproach that came upon me through sins and iniquities oh lord remove them oh lord remove them remove from me filthy garments satanic rags lord remove them oh lord remove them oh lord remove them oh lord remove them oh lord remove them remove from me all the filthy garments remove them oh lord remove them oh lord remove the filthy garments father yes lord thank you father in jesus name we pray say father lord all the judgments for sins and iniquities that have that have been hanging upon me oh lord lift them hello for example if one has shed blood or they have shed blood from one's foundation blood will be crying and say god see they have not allowed us to live they must also not live they must not live their children must not live amen and what that means is that you know certain illness could set in terminal illness could set in challenge that will come threatening one's life will set in and when god will want to heal as a daughter of zion as a child of god as a priest satan will bring the record he will begin to accuse and once people don't have understanding to pray the right prayer to deal with that issue of accusation because as long as he's able to accuse what will happen god will stand aloof god will stand aloof and when the person is crying to god god will be showing some revelations maybe bloodshed in one's background but people don't understand they say ah i saw people killing people today i reject that dream and i cancel it i cancel it and god is saying look this is the issue that is threatening your life 
this is the issue. It's not allowing me to, to heal you. But because of lack of understanding, they won't know how to deal with it. The person can pass on. He can be a priest. He can be a bishop. He can be a pastor. It does not matter. He will go to heaven. Haven't lived in his in the state of grace. But he has been cut short where? On earth. Praise God. Praise God. That is why we must ask that God should take away the judgments. There are judgments on many on people. He called me some time ago in a particular family. Father, mother died untimely in a particular pattern. First son, second son, third son had died in a particular pattern. pattern. Then it was the next son. And I ran there and the Lord said, this family, bloodshed, occultism. And I, we prayed for mercy and the person got revived. This child from the hospital I said, go home now. This is what the Lord said. Begin to cry to God for mercy and um, forgiveness because the blood that was shed so much. Amen. But because the person was well, then they took the person again to another place. They said the had been ministered to and then the person was okay. And then started walking. So when the protesting back came the next time, whew, the person died. The same pattern like others. And the person that came began to blaspheme. God, where are you? Why will you allow my brother to die like that? My father has died. I began to curse God. <laughs> Amen. And because I was brought to the scene, God said, see, see, the spirit of death is already on her to take her now. Amen. I immediately we had to begin to repent for our own blasphemy. And then guide her. Praise God. Otherwise, she herself will have followed suit. So it is not his principle. We need to have understanding. Say, Father Lord, all the judgments for sins and iniquities that have been hanging on me right from my ancestors, from my lands, from my parents, even from my own personal involvements. Oh Lord, cancel them. Cancel those judgments, oh Lord, by your precious blood. Cancel those judgments. Judgments say I must not marry. Judgments say I must not be blessed. Judgment saying I must not be helped. Judgment saying I must not live long. Judgment saying I must not be fruitful. Lord, cancel them. Lift the embargo, so God. Cancel the judgment, Father. By the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Cancel the judgment. Lift the embargo, God. Cancel the judgment. Judgment saying I must not enjoy marriage. I must not enjoy my spouse. Lord, cancel the judgment. Lift the embargo, so God. Cancel the judgment, Father. Lift the embargo, so God. Cancel the judgments. Lift the embargoes. Cancel the judgments. In the name of Jesus. Lord, cancel. Lord, cancel. Cancel the judgments. Cancel the judgments. Cancel the judgments, Father. Let the embargoes be lifted. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Final prayer, you will cry to God. Say, oh Lord, my Father. As you did to Joshua the high priest, have forgiven me. Command the manifestation of my progress. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and talk to God. Have forgiven me, O Lord. Command the manifestation. You commanded that Joshua should be decorated, and he was decorated. Command the manifestation of my breakthrough. Command my marriage to be possible. Command my fruitfulness. Command my healing. Command my deliverance. Command my breakthrough. Command my expansion. Command my admission. Command my provision. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, command. Command it, oh Lord. Yes, once the Lord commands it, it is coming to pass. It is coming to pass. In the mighty name of Jesus. Command it, O Lord. Command my marriage. Command my fruitfulness. Command my progress. Command my lifting. Yes, command my promotion. Command my enjoying marriage. Command my fruitfulness. Command my exam success. Command, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jehovah God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, we want to thank you because you are a good God. 
I want to thank you because you are a faithful father. Lord, when you saw the position of Joshua the high priest, that thou since iniquity traceable to him from the land, that made him defy as a high priest from that land, because there were fitness in that land. Lord, I ask you, you, you went ahead and dealt with the issue of his sin. You caused his iniquity to be taken away. You caused his sins to pass. Just like you did to Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 6. Lord, I ask, as your people have called upon you and repented of sins and iniquities, giving legal ground to protest your powers, Lord, hear from heaven in the name of Jesus. Hear from heaven in the name of Jesus. You says you will cause our iniquities to pass. You will blot out our transgression. And our iniquity you will remember no more. Lord, do that now in the name of Jesus. Lord, all the handwriting of not just ordinances. Yes, ordinances from sins and iniquities. Say because of this, this person must not marry. This person must not be fruitful. This person must not have more than one or two children. This person must not progress. This person must not live long. This person must not enjoy marriage. This person must not advance. This person must not be rich. This person must not make it in life. This person must not advance academically. Lord, today, by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, blot out all those records in the name of Jesus. All the records that are witnessing that the accuser of the brethren has been using to accuse the people of God before you, blot them out in the name of Jesus. Blot them out in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask today, all the judgments that have been hanging, that Satan has been saying, you, this judgment is there, that because of this rape, because of this incest, this person must not enjoy good things. This person must not be this. Lord, we ask, all the judgment, let them be cancelled in the name of Jesus. Because you are forgiven, O oh God. Remember, Romans 4, 25 says, Jesus Christ was given for our offenses. He was raised for our justification. How can you justify us, O oh God? We need no more to carry the consequences of the offenses. Therefore, O oh God, let all the judgment be cancelled. Let all the burden of judgment be lifted. Let all the embargo be lifted. In the name of Jesus. Therefore, we rebuke you protesting powers. Papa have been protesting against your progress, against your deliverance, against the progress of the work of your hands, of your organization, of your marriage, of your institution. Father, I've been protesting against you, against your blessing and breakthrough in any area of life. Hear the word of God. The Lord rebukes you. The Lord that rebuked uh, the, the Satan on that day, the Lord rebukes you, Satan. The Lord rebukes you, principalities. The Lord rebukes you, powers. The Lord rebukes you, spiritual wickedness. All congregation of wickedness, of satanic powers that have been contending, protesting against the advancement of any son or daughter of God. The Lord rebukes you all in the name of Jesus. Loose your hold. Loose your grip. Loose your hold. Loose your grip. Clear off from the way. In the mighty name of Jesus. Today we command your breakthrough is possible. Your marriage is possible. Your fruitfulness is possible. Your enjoyment of marriage is possible. Your financial progress is possible. Your educational advancement is possible. Begin to move forward. Protesting powers are disgracing your life. They are disgracing your home. They are disgracing your finance. They are disgracing your body. They are disgracing the work of your hands. In the name of Jesus. They are disgracing your ministry. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Possess your victory over them. And let your victory be permanent. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, it is settled. Amen.